All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the... Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Augusta. Uh, my name is Chris Drescher, and I'm one of the board members here at UUCA. Um, we're glad to have you joining us uh, for worship this morning, and I want to let you know about a few of the things that are going on here at uh, UUCA right now. All right. Uh, so um, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of places to find that uh, information, including the bulletin board, our website, uh, and our weekly e-announcements. If it's your first time here, welcome. We're glad to have you. And if you like, please fill out the blue visitor card in the back of one of the seat pockets. And that way we will be able to add you to Realm, which is the online extension of our community here. Uh, this week, there's several events going on. Uh, this Sunday, uh, there is a, I don't think that's accurate, so I'm going to skip that one. The, on Tuesday, August 13th at 1130 is a women's luncheon at Shish Kebab in Evans. On Wednesday, August 14th at 1145 is Romeo, aka Retired Old Men Eating Out at T-Bone Steakhouse in Evans. Next Sunday, August 18th at 12 p.m. will be the Soulful Home Parents Group in the Faith Formation Wing. And next Monday, August 19th at 5.30 p.m., there'll be a finance committee meeting in the common room. And just as a reminder, due to carpet staining, only water is allowed here in the sanctuary. We hope that you'll stick around afterwards and join us for coffee, snacks, and conversation uh, afterwards. All right, the service will begin shortly.
Thank you, Job. That is one of my favorite pieces of music, by the way. Thank you for choosing it. Um, anyway, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody. Um, welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Augusta, where we aspire to create beloved community guided by the values of generosity, love, justice, compassion, to name just a few. Here in the CSRA, we are on the lands of the Westo peoples, the Savannah Shawnee, and the Iuchi peoples of the Muscogee Confederacy. My name is Cheryl Martin. As you can see, I'm your worship host for today. I use she, her pronouns. And today, I am very happy to be co-creating this service with um, Jezebel Anat and Joseph Zuchowski. Um, Joe. <laughs> Joe, okay. <laughs> Joe, it's like, gosh. You know, everybody has that one friend, but I digress. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and our wonderful music director, Joe Patchen, and our wonderful folks at the Tech Deck, and all of you, whether you're here personally or catching us via Zoom. With that being said, let us now enter in her into our time of service. This is our chalice. I'm gonna take a little bit more time with our chalice lighting than usual today. I know when I first came to UU with Joe, we, had, we were basically, we had come down from New York, we were pagans, we were looking for liberal community, and we saw this chalice like, ooh, that's cool, because the chalice and the flame resonated very much because they're both ancient pagan symbols, the hearth fires of goddesses such as Hestia, Vesta, Bridget, the sacred connotations of the chalice, the cauldron, the cup, the grail, the container. So we were on board with that from the beginning. And as we learned more about why you use have this as the symbol. This is the primary symbol now of Unitarian Universalism. Uh, every church I know of uses it. You'll see a lot of jewelry with this emblem. It is also the emblem on UU veterans grave markers that has been accepted by the VA. So it's a renowned symbol. And it was also was used by Jan Hus, who is a 14th century Bohemian priest who defied a lot of the Catholic order because he gave wine to everyone, not just the priest. He translated the Bible so everybody could read it, not just the priests. That was considered heresy and he was burned at the stake. So we're heretics, cool. 1941, World War II. Unitarian Service Committee is in Europe working to rescue a lot of Unitarians and a lot of Jews. Hans Deutsch, created this chalice in the flame as a symbol for what was then Unitarian. So we are resisting Nazis, that is cool. So with this chalice now, our title of the service is We Are the Chalice. Our bodies are physical containers of our fire and energy. So we are having the theme of this service as we gather together, kindling, rekindling, the flames within us. And we're actually going to use a chant to start that. If um, tech people can find that slide, it's a chant called Welcome Flame that was created by the reclaiming community. And I'm gonna invite everyone to sing and snap your fingers. Let's get some energy going here. Let the fire rise in me and let it move me spark. Blaze ember ash, let the fire rise in me and let it move me spark. Blaze ember ash, whoa, whoa, the welcome flame spark. Blaze ember ash, whoa, whoa, the welcome flame spark. Blaze ember ash, let's move, let the fire rise in me and let it move me far. Blaze ember ash, let the fire rise in me and let it move me far. 
chalice here and in our hearts as we come together to worship this beautiful summer morning. Blessed be. Would you rise, uh, would you rise and body your spirit for our opening hymn, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. My name is Marika Bhattacharya, and I'm a member of your pastoral care team. I, uh, in particular, represent the support of our congregation for those who are struggling with a mental health challenge. Now is the time in our service when we get to, we invite you to share a joy or concern that is shaping your life recently. And so the um, children are staying in the service with us today. The little ones have nursery care, but we won't be singing them out. This is the service that they are welcome to participate in. So now we come to our time of prayer and meditation. And I invite you to quiet yourself. If you like, have both feet on Mother Earth, feeling the ground beneath you, feeling the chair supporting you, you can straighten your spine as much as you can, making space between the vertebra, as though the top of your head is stretching towards the sky, beyond this roof, towards the sun, so that you are fully grounded and present. We are the chalice. Chalice contains fire. Fire is the element that needs fuel. So how do we fuel ourselves? We begin with breath. Breathing in through your nose, deep into your belly, letting your belly expand, and then gently releasing it. Find a breath that is deep and full, comfortable for you. You don't have to gasp, <gasps> trying to fill yourself like a balloon, but let the breath come in gently through your chest, expanding your ribs, deep into your belly, 
feeling the air energizing your body and letting it go at your own pace. How do we feel ourselves? Food, of course, the physical nourishment, the healthier and more vital our food options, the healthier our bodies will be. We nourish ourselves with water and in this heat, I hope everyone is drinking plenty of water. We also nourish our souls. How do we fuel our souls? And sometimes that is our quest is finding our own soul's nourishment. Music, art, crafts, creativity, dance, singing, all of these wonderful creative endeavors that we do not have to put the society's judgment on, am I any good or not? We enjoy our creativity for its own sake. Music feeds our soul. Visuals feed our eyes with lovely, inspiring images. The music that resonates through our ears, the speaking and singing that move through our throats and through our mouths, energizing our bodies, dancing our bodies, moving our bodies. Physical activity keeps us strong, whether it's walking or yoga or stretching or kickboxing or whatever we do for our bodies and beyond that kindling the flame of others as well and that is part of the mission here that when our flames are low we receive kindling we receive the spark we receive the nourishment for our own flames from this community and then from this community to take it to the wider community. Many of us are active outside this community in the arts, in social justice work, in feeding people, in helping to improve this world. So let us use this time now. Joe will be leading us in the Rise Up O Flame chant, which will be followed by a moment of silence so let us sing this chant, if we could get the slide up, please, and then nourish ourselves through song and silence. <clears throat>
Hello again. Um, I have kind of a little bit of a random thought about one of the things that I really appreciate about this church. And it's the fact that we have the opportunity to hear from so many different voices, so many perspectives. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was, I was raised Catholic. And even though I will always be a sucker for liturgy and sacred music, um, one of the things was always having pretty much the same format, the same person, the priest leading the service, and it's pretty much it's pretty much standard, which is, it is just what it is. It's all well and good. But one of the things I appreciate is being able to have a service that's led by a minister or led by one of us. And today's service being led by Jezebel and Joe, and especially since we know that it will not be boring and I am here for it. <laughs> I, am, I am here for it and this is all wonderful. So um, that being said, it's important for us to support this space so we can keep on hearing those perspectives, keep on hearing those voices. So, so I'd like at this time to invite the ushers to come forward. night and the leaves hanging down and the grass on the ground smelling sweet move up the road to the outside of town and the sound of good gospel meet. sits a ragged tent where there ain't no trees and that gospel group Telling you and me it's Brother Love, say Brother Love's Traveling Salvation Show. Alley, alley. Grab the old ladies and pack up the babies, cause everyone goes, cause everyone knows about Brother Love's show. Room gets hushed and still, and when you almost bet, you can hear yourself sweat. He walks in. Eyes black as coal, and when he lifts his face, every ear in the place is on him. Starting soft and slow, like a small earthquake. But when he lets go, half the valley shakes. Yes, it's Brother Love, say Brother Love's traveling salvation show. Grab the old ladies and pack up the babies, cause everyone knows, and everyone goes to Brother Love shows. Hallelujah. People! Hallelujah. I say people, listen to me! Hallelujah. You've got one of the finest minds ever to have evolved on this planet, and it's our duty to use it. And we have two of the most powerful hands on this planet, with them we could create or destroy, and it's up to us how we choose to use it. Take my hand in yours. Walk with me this day. In my heart I know I will never stray. Say it, say it, say it. Say it. Yes, yay! It's Brother Love's Travel and Salvation Show. Grab the old ladies and pack up the babies cause everyone goes and everyone knows about Brother Love's show. Hallelujah. My late cousin Carol introduced me to Neil Diamond many years ago and he's been one of my favorites.
Thank you for your generosity. As you've noticed, we've had some gospel themed songs. And when I was in New York, I was part of a pagan chorus called Four Winds Earth Chorus, and we sang the music from many spiritual traditions because at the time, there were a lot of pagan chants. They all sounded like dirges. And I remember our choral director, who was actually a Lakota shaman named Kurt Talkingstone, saying, okay, here's the very sincere pagans. We all come from the goddess, <laughs> and to her we shall return like a drop of rain flowing to the ocean. And I see people out there because they've heard pagans like that. <laughs> Not us, but meantime, meantime Baptists. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more light. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Where's the energy? Where's the spirit going to be attracted to? We want that energy. We want that spirit. So that is what we are encouraging here today is finding your spirit. So we're gonna do another chant to get us started on our reflection part. Uh, it was written by my friend Patricia Kelly in New York. Unfortunately, I don't think she ever recorded it but we have some gestures as well, engaging our bodies, getting ourselves connected with what we are doing. So as we grounded ourselves during the meditation, and if we can get the a slide up for this, and actually hold, let me show the gestures for a minute. The chant is simply roots down. So left hand down, you can stand up if you like, branches up, reaching your hand up to the sky, so you are really feeling how we are beings between earth and sky. Bless and fill the living cup. That's we are the chalice. Dance the ring of ancient fire. We're making a clockwise circle. See what changes will transpire. We open our hands to the abundance of change. Once more with the gestures and we'll try with the words and singing. So it's reaching roots down, branches up, Bless and fill the living cup. Dance the ring of ancient fire. See what changes will transpire. And let's get the words. If you use the wrong hand or go in the wrong direction, it's fine. It's about movement. Just try not to hit anybody. So it's simply roots down, branches up. Bless and fill the living cup. Dance the ring of ancient fire. See what changes will transpire. Roots down, branches up. Bless and fill the living cup. Dance the ring of ancient fire. See what changes will transpire. Roots down, branches up. Bless and fill the living cup. Dance the ring of ancient fire. See what changes will transpire. Roots down, branches up. Bless and fill the living cup. Dance the ring of ancient fire. See what changes one more time. Roots down, branches up. Bless and fill the living cup. Dance the ring of ancient fire. See what changes will transpire. Now I bring you someone who raised Catholic, wanted to be a priest, became a wicked high priest, but can also do a kick-ass minister service. Come on, Joe, don't mix it up. Please excuse the use of the cane. I was say I'm not as young as I used to be, and besides, you wouldn't take an old man's walking stick from him now, would you? <laughs> Thank you for letting me be here. I don't know what, I don't know why. I mean, I think, I think some of you haven't seen your therapist enough. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here right now. But seriously, well, but pass this for seriously with me. Uh, the topic of today's sermon 
is we are the chalice. And I was thinking of how can I explain this? Because when you think of how do you explain we are the chalice? I mean, if you really look at it, if you look at it from a point of view of a physicist, there's really no du there's no dual dualization in this universe. It's extension. We are the create. We are the end product of 14 and a half billion years. It's almost as long as I've been around. Uh, <laughs> 14 and a half billion years of transformation, of destruction, of creation, we contain the same subatomic particles that were present at that moment when the Big Bang occurred. Think about that. You are connected to the, the Big Bang. Every, everybody sitting here, every brick in that wall, every atom you inhale was part of that experience. And what I've learned is the more we learn, the more we realize we don't know. We don't know if this universe is one and it's, it's the only one it's ever been, or there's been a billion before us and there's going to be a billion after us. We're the only ones here right now. And I was thinking how, when we think of the universe, the yin, the yang, the light, the dark, the receptive and the projective, what what symbol can we use in it? Of course, the chalice. Now, the, you know the, the, the old Norse uh, host of Skoll, right? They think it comes from, let us drink from the skulls of our enemies. But what is but the thing is, the inside of the skull, when you hollow it out, well, for Republicans already, they, got, they beat us to it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I said it. <laughs> You know why, the, never mind, I'm not gonna go down that track. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this, the skull minus the brain is a chalice. It holds things. The brain is a type of challenge. It's more like, a, because of its structure, it's more like a sponge, it picks up things. What we choose to put into those chalices, that's why, why, is that, why do we do that? Very simply, we have to ask ourselves, this is the one question that faces all of us. And I know some of you here will not like to hear it, but it's the eternal question. What's in it for me? Why should I do this? Why should I believe this? Why should I accept this? Because it's in my, what I perceive for it to be in my favor. That is the core of survival. Our ancestors going back, as far as we can think, were communal animals. We formed communities. We created methodologies of survival within these communities. If you couldn't survive within your own community, how the hell are you going to survive in the greater community of the universe out there? This is one question that we, I don't think we ask ourselves as, we like to think of ourselves as Unitarians as universal as being above and beyond these more primal issues, but that, but we all started as a primal issue. We started as a damn cell. A fertilized cell, okay? It doesn't get any more simpler than that. And when you talk about life and you talk about consciousness, well, form is consciousness. Everything comes into a being and everything exists for a while and everything passes out of being. An old Sifu told me many years ago, never be too prepared. Why? because you never really know what's going to happen and you cannot prepare for every contingency sometimes you have to adapt to that contingency you cannot change it but you have to adapt to it then through that adaption comes evolution and through evolution comes survival now i said earlier in my in this in the offertory hymn we have a mind and two hands how we choose to use them is up to us. I've learned in my life that I could cause somebody great serious, serious pain and injury through the words I use, the actions I take. But on the flip side, I can use those same skills to knowing the strengths and weaknesses of the human body and the human mind to help somebody to survive and get, to, and get them through situations that they, don't, they find themselves in. 
It's what I choose to use and how I choose it. That is my chalice. That is what's gone, that's gone, it's gone in here into this, into this empty pot. That's why if I get hit in the head, I'm not worried, it won't cause much damage anyway. But, <laughs> but that's the basis of what we are. We are the chalice. The form we have is the collection of molecular mo magnetism holding ourselves together, but nothing lasts forever. No sorrow lasts forever, no pain lasts forever. All lifetimes, no matter how painful or how sorrowful, eventually come to an end. We are the end product of thousands of generations of evolution of our ancestors. You know, if you go back every generation, the population of the earth gets smaller. Think about this. The population of the earth gets smaller. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the relationship we get, oh, okay, we could debate that later, but, but think of it. The further back we go, the less and less human, humans there were on this planet. That's what I'm saying. The less and less humans there were on this planet. We evolved out of a small tribe of, anth of anthropoids, Possibly until we find another, another ancestor that fits the bill better. That's one thing about science. It's always changing. It's always developing because it's always learning. Science is not knowledge. It's a methodology of acquiring knowledge. And if I'm making some of you think that's a good thing. But we came from a small troop of anthropoids that eventually evolved into what and who we are today. And going back further, we can find connection to every plant, every atom, every molecule, every molecule, every atom that's found on this planet, that's found in this universe. That is the point of being the chalice, recognizing who and what we are. And also, when you think of mythology, what is mythology? Mythology is real. Now, I love mythology, and I, I know where it came from. My grandmother, she used to tell me stories of what it was like to grow up in eastern Poland. Oh, she was in her 80s, going to her 90s when she was telling me this. And I was listening to the stories of a time and a place I could never see except through those stories, those memories. That's what was so important about her telling me this so that I would remember and I could keep it going. From there came my love of history. And as, as Cheryl and Jez said, I was raised as a Catholic. But what happened was simply this. I did something you're really not supposed to do when you're in the most organized religions. I asked questions. And the problem was when you have more questions than you have answers, I think that's just, then you have to make a decision what you're going to do and where you're going to go. Don't worry about fitting in in one crowd because there's millions of organizations and, and groups and things. So you got to fit somewhere. And if you can't find a place, well, then you make a place. Remember, as the, as the great Morticia Adams said, <laughs> what is normal to the spider is chaos to the fly. Basically, what I'm saying is it's our choice, what we feed our minds and what we going back. Let me backtrack. I, I'm like, I better explain myself a little bit. Have you ever seen a chicken picking a picking grain up off the ground or pick? Yeah. Well, that's how I learn. I pick up bits and pieces. We all do. Maybe I'm just a little bit, you know. But what I'm saying is. When we think of it, symbolism, the mythologies were primitive methodologies of transmission of knowledge of a culture, of a people, of a history, of a sense of where we came from. Of what, what's unique about many of the, 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 the mythologies is the fact that we can relate to the heroes in them, the villains, the monsters, the dragons, whatever. They're symbols, just as the gods are symbols. They're not perfect. The pagan deities were not perfect. They were far from it. They were humanity exaggerated. They were humanity put above and slightly beyond us. They were humans written larger than us, 
But the thing is, we learn how we created them. They became the embodiment of our experience as human beings. We created them. We created everything on this planet, more or less, using what, what is available to us, using the knowledge in this chalice. And the bottom line comes down to this. As I said in my, my short speech earlier, we can create a heaven or a hell on earth using the knowledge we have by the choices we have. I know I can be a bit of a pot star and a, little, and a, and a bit of a slinger of certain types of matter that I will not discuss in this, in this, uh, this group right now. <laughs> but you know something? If it wasn't for the pot stars, the soup wouldn't get cooked. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you learned something. Like, never let me back in here again. <laughs> Would you rise and body your spirit for our closing hymn, This Little Light of Mine? Yes, this is, this is the kind of energy we need within ourselves, within our community, locally and nationally. We want to see some smiles. We want to see the energy. We want to see human connection and care and igniting all of these fires, fires of commitment, community, creativity. And so now we must extinguish our physical fire because we don't want to set the church on fire, <laughs> but let's keep the fire in our hearts, this inner flame, carry it out there. Blessed be, y'all. Yeah. Spirit of love.